Uh, teardown time. This is a, a dash camera that was on my car until just recently it started to malfunction. I think something in the power supply has gone bad on it, so after four years it uh, gave up the ghost. Uh, it was attached to the windscreen with this module here. There's obviously a USB power section, then there's a mount here, so it uh, sit on the windscreen. This, however, is much more than just simply a mechanical mounting bracket. It also contains the uh, GPS module, which allowed the dash cam to record uh, the locations. Let's uh, tear this apart. So I removed half the shell. This is the uh, connector that goes uh, to the actual dash cam. If you trace back the wiring, you can see there's three connections here to the GPS module, a uh, power ground and a transmit. So it looks like this module here just transmits its location uh, uh, into the dash cam. Uh, some unfortunate design choices you can see immediately. Uh, this is a, a battery which has been uh, welded into place, so it's uh, impossible to replace. Um, unfortunately, that kind of guarantees uh, planned obsolescence because the battery eventually will lose its charge. I should imagine the module starts to malfunction. I don't think that's what happened to my dash cam. The actual power circuit in the dash cam also failed. So uh, The um, module here is a shield for the RF. Uh, we'll take that off because that's actually where the interesting integrated circuit will live. And on this side here, uh, it looks like an antenna uh, for the GPS signal. It's some sort of metal can. There's some sort of solder blob on this side, which seems to actually carry through to this side here. So that'll be interesting. Let's uh, get the hot air gun out and uh, take this thing apart further. So with the metal lid uh, removed, there's obviously two integrated circuits. They're marked uh, sky tracks, so I'll look those up and uh, we'll de-encapsulate them, take a better look at what they are. Looks like there is a uh, oscillator here uh, and one here as well, actually, and then just a smattering of uh, discrete components. But uh, the real technology will be hidden by these uh, two pieces of silicon, so let's uh, analyze those. So here are those two silicon dies that are extracted from their packaging. On the uh, right-hand side, we have the analog chip, which is the RF front end, and on the left-hand side, the uh, baseband processor. If we zoom into the RF chip first, we can see it's kind of visually very appealing, as all RF designs tend to be. Uh, you can see the typical inductors and such not. Um, I'm not going to analyze this chip in too much depth. I'll put a copy of it my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. Uh, today I think we'll focus on the baseband processor. And uh, this is the uh, view of it from the uh, top. And uh, we see, of course, there's a lot of metal in the very top there. It actually doesn't look like there's much of anything going on. But if you strip the top metal off and look at the uh, diffusion layer, uh, you get a real sense of what's uh, going on. Let me just uh, come back to the metal. Uh, you can see, of course, obscuring just about everything. And then if I just come back, you can then, of course, see all sorts of cool things. Um, you can see, of course, a lot of memory structures, uh, tremendous amount of memory, in fact, in this uh, particular assembly. It looks like half the die. Uh, but that makes sense because it's a completely embedded process. There, there is no off-chip uh, off storage, either for uh, the... Uh, boot program, nor for uh, the Voltel storage. You can, of course, see also macro functions that are laid down. They're basically been uh, handcrafted and then uh, assembled as uh, part of a library. Uh, usually that's because they have uh, very special characteristics. Either they're very high speed or very low noise, for example, like an analog function or a power function like a voltage regulator. Uh, the uh, bit in the middle there, which looks just like a bunch of gray, uh, indistinct uh, field uh, is, of course, the gates. And, of course, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, the most interesting thing about modern process nodes, of course, is they're very, very small. So, of course, you want to measure how many gates are in that gray area. You think you could, of course, just take a picture of them and maybe uh, do some math. Uh, I have a very precise slide here. It actually puts some uh, divisions on my microscope, which allows me to see uh, how much field of view I have. Uh, each uh, small tick mark is a 0.01 millimeters or a, a 10 micrometers. If I come back and uh, take a look at the picture I get out of that, I get uh, this uh, image here. And then, of course, I can take a picture of the uh, silicon with the highest possible magnification of my uh, microscope. Uh, and I get this very indistinct thing here. Uh, now, if I do a little bit of post-processing and I uh, zoom into one section here in a CAD system, the little red bounding box now is 0 0.01, micro, um, 0 0.01 millimeters on square, or 10 micrometers. Uh, the literature on this chip says it's around a 90 nanometer process node, and of course you can clearly see the um, the problem. Uh, the field of view here being at 10 micrometers, and uh, the gate length of uh, about 100 um, nanometers, of course, is uh, a huge number of order of magnitudes. Of course, uh, if you've taken a physics course, that shouldn't be of much surprise, because the uh, wavelength of light is between 400 and 700 nanometers. And if I'm looking at a 90 nanometer process node, 
uh, optical means uh, no matter how much uh, magnification I tried to get on my uh, objectives would uh, would never work uh, because the features are too small to see uh, and of course that's how you get into the realm of a scanning electron microscope very quickly uh, if you try to bring a modern process node uh, down to the uh, gate level so this is the uh, antenna for the GPS unit now, this is a, a chunk of ceramic and there's two metal plates one on this side and one on this side it's known as a patch antenna and uh, you can see I sanded away the metal here it's just been uh, placed on this side of the ceramic and then uh, there's a uh, through via with the metal contact that goes down to the assemblies went onto the circuit board and you can see it's isolated from the ground plane so uh, these are surprisingly inexpensive you can uh, purchase them off DigiKey for like two and a half dollars for a single unit quantity so um, that is what they use for the antenna well there we have it that was the uh, GPS unit uh, that was on my dash cam um, in some ways it's nice, I guess, electronics doesn't last very long because I end up being able to analyze them, but um, it is a bit annoying that some of these things just seem to have such a short service life and uh, have to be replaced uh, so frequently. As always, if you want to take a look at those photographs, electronupdate.blogspot.com.